Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate from your surrounding area. On today's program... Come to me, he says. He sounds out, I am your year of jubilee. I am your rest. I am the one who releases you from the debt of your sin. I am the one who makes you a child of God. Come to me, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. The service will begin after this opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Confession of Sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, Renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now the Old Testament reading for today is written in Leviticus, the 25th chapter, verses 8 to 12. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the people this, Count off seven Sabbaths of years, seven times seven years, so that the seven Sabbaths of years amount to a period of 49 years. Then have the trumpet sounded everywhere on the tenth day of the seventh month. On the Day of Atonement, sound the trumpet throughout your land. Consecrate the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a year of jubilee for you. Each one of you is to return to his family property, and each to his own clan. The fiftieth year shall be a jubilee for you. Do not sow, and do not reap what grows of itself, or harvest the, the untended vines. For it is a jubilee, and it is to be holy for you. Eat only what is taken directly from the fields. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is written in Romans, the seventh chapter. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, 
sold under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me a captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for my message today is from Leviticus chapter 25 and Matthew chapter 11. Have you ever heard the legend of the Liberty Bell? Well, on this weekend, you need to hear the legend of the Liberty Bell because it is Independence Day weekend. And so here it is. It's actually a story that was written in the 1800s. In 1776, the people in Philadelphia heard that Congress was about ready to take a vote on the Declaration of Independence. And so there was a buzz all over Philadelphia and a crowd gathered together outside the doors of the State House, wondering, hoping, fearing what would be done. And so everyone, except an elderly bellman who was in the belfry, had their ears posted up against the door, gathered together in front of the State House. And down below, there was also a fair-haired young boy who had his ear pressed against the door. And he was supposed to give the signal if the Declaration of Independence was passed. And he was listening, and he was listening, when suddenly this fair-haired boy suddenly pushed his way through the crowd, and he yelled up to the bell tower, Ring, Grandfather, ring! And the tones of the Liberty Bell rang out liberty and freedom, liberty and freedom that are heard even to this day. Now that is the legend of the Liberty Bell. But there is another reason why it is called the Liberty Bell besides that legend and because it was possibly, probably, rang on the day that the, the Declaration of Independence was read. It is also called the Liberty Bell because inscribed on the edge of the Liberty Bell are these words from Leviticus chapter 25. And the words are, Proclaim liberty throughout the land to all the inhabitants thereof. Now, we all know what that liberty means for us in this country. For us Christians, it especially means that we are able to, to worship Christ in freedom. We are able to assemble as brothers and sisters in Christ in freedom. And that we have the freedom of, of speech to proclaim Christ in freedom. But that verse from little Leviticus chapter 25 that says proclaim liberty throughout the land to all the inhabitants, what did it mean when it was first spoken? Well, it meant two things. It meant that the people of Israel were free because they were God's people, and it meant rest. They were free because they were God's people. God's people at this time of, uh, in Leviticus 25 are at the bottom of, of Mount Sinai because they had just been rescued from, from Egypt. You, you remember how they crossed the Red Sea? Well, they'd been slaves in Egypt and their people had been slaves for the last 400 years. For the last 400 years as slaves, they had built buildings and roads for Pharaoh, not for themselves. The last 400 years, they had been living in tyranny. If Pharaoh said that they had to make twice as many bricks as before, they had to make twice as many bricks as they had before. If Pharaoh wanted every one of their baby Israelite boys to be thrown into the Nile River as soon as it was born, into the water, that baby would go. They were slaves. And besides all that, do you know what slaves didn't have? A July 4th weekend. Not only because J July 4th didn't exist back then, but because they didn't have any weekends. They didn't have a day off. They were slaves. They worked every day, every week, 
every year. But now, they are at the bottom of Mount Sinai because God himself had rescued them from Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm. And at the bottom of Mount Sinai, they're at rest. So much rest that, well, they got in a little trouble with the, the um, with, they got in a little trouble because of the golden calf. But after, but it just shows how much time they had off. They're at rest. And then Moses, he comes down from Mount Sinai after talking to God for a while. And this is what he says on behalf of God. When you get into the new land, count off 50 years and proclaim liberty throughout the land. It is a year of jubilee. As God's people, they were to have an entire year of liberty and rest. And this is what God said about that year of jubilee. He said, don't sow, don't reap, don't harvest. And if you are a farmer, and most of them were farmers, and you don't have to plant or harvest, that means a lot of rest. And it means that the land gets rest. And God said that indentured servants were also to be set free. So they got their rest too. Those in debt, they were released from their debts. Proclaim liberty throughout the land. The year of Jubilee was to be a year to be free and rest as God's people. Boy, we could use a year like that, couldn't we? We're halfway through the year 2020, and it's been a year where we have been slaves of sorts. Way back in February, March, April, most of May, places of businesses were shut down. Maybe some are even shut down to this day. Many people were quarantined in their homes, and there was a great slave master whose name was Fear. Some, legitimately so, were afraid that they would get the virus and die. Others were afraid of having the virus, not knowing they had the virus, and passing that virus on to others. People were legitimately afraid for their jobs, for their business, for their income. But now, of course, there were other taskmasters before the virus showed up, right? Activities may have been canceled because of the virus, but let's face it, we were needing some rest. Depending on how old our kids are, we were running. We were running here to this activity, we were running there for that activity, and our jobs, the expectations of our jobs, had us, had us tired out, busy. Then there were, then a lot of us have family expectations that were keeping us busy. And sometimes we found ourselves running like whips were nipping at our heels. We had a life where we didn't get much rest. And part of it thought, well, maybe we can find some perfection in our busyness. And then there was another weariness that we had, maybe still have. A weariness that comes from some poor choices that we made may have some self-inflicted wounds that have hurt us, some self-inflicted wounds that have destroyed a relationship or two. Maybe we have been wounded by someone else, and it seems like we have a giant debt from our self-inflicted wounds or from wounds from someone else. If we just want to be released from that debt. We are so tired from all of this that we need a liberty bell to ring and proclaim liberty throughout our land and in our lives once again. And that liberty bell is ringing today. It has a unique ring to it. No other bell can even begin to make the music that this liberty bell is sounding out today. Because this is what our liberty bell sounds like. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That's Jesus. He is our liberty bell. 
Come to me, he says. He sounds out, I am your year of jubilee. I am your rest. I am the one who releases you from the debt of your sin. I am the one who makes you a child of God. Come to me, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He gives you rest because your worth is not tied up in pushing yourself to every bit of busyness that you can possibly be. Your worth is not tied up in being perfect at everything. Your worth is not tied up in being the perfect parent, the perfect spouse, the perfect worker, the perfect church member. No, your worth is tied up in Jesus. He is the one who has pushed himself to every limit for you, to complete everything for you. He has pushed himself to the limit of death for you. You have done enough in Jesus. Did you hear the bell? Is, someone in rank, Christ is ringing it for you today. I am ringing it for you today. The bell, the liberty bell, Jesus says, Come to me, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Our year of Jubilee right now is about being released from debt. You know, in, the version, in one version of the Lord's Prayer, we pray, forgive us our debts, instead of forgive us our trespasses. Sometimes we think that the debts of the past are not paid, and more than that, that they're gaining interest every day. And they're wearing us down. But today, the Liberty Bell, our Liberty Bell, Jesus is ringing, and it is ringing this. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. See, our Liberty Bell has a giant crack in the side as well, right where the spear went into his side. And that crack in his side is your liberty. It is your rest. It is what says, I have done it all for you. And by the way, when we pray, forgive us our debts, we finish it by saying, as we forgive those who are indebted to us. We set other people free in this year of Jubilee as well. And then Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. You know what a yoke is? It's, it's what they... What, a farmer would put over an oxen is, that oxen would pull a plow. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to, you, you're saying, hey, pastor, we're talking about rest. Why are you talking about a yoke? Well, you don't get released from, from your responsibilities. You are still going to have to be a, a parent. You're still going to have to be a spouse. You're still going to have to be a worker. You're still going to have to be a church member. You're still going to have to have these things that, yes, yeah, sometimes they are going to cause us stress. And they're going to threaten to burden you. But Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. See, he says, my yoke. See, it's, it's a yoke that is, it has a place for two oxen to pull. He says, take my yoke. It's put that, that yoke on, my yoke upon you, and let's pull that plow together. Come to Jesus. Cast all your anxiety on him. Let him do the worrying. Wear his yoke. Let him shoulder most of the burden. The burden of being a parent. The burden of being a spouse. The burden of your job. The burden of being a church member. Cast that burden. Let him pull that burden with you. And you find your rest. Today a liberty bell is ringing in our country. It's, it's ringing out freedom. But we have our own liberty bell that is ringing out to us. It says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray the prayer together that our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. Our hope is that you have been blessed and encouraged by this presentation. If you are able to attend local services, I would like you to, I would like to invite you to worship with our congregation. If you are in Redfield, South Dakota, please join us at Messiah Lutheran Church on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. If you are in Dolan, South Dakota, we'd like you to visit us at Redeemer Lutheran Church at 11 a.m. This broadcast is supported by viewers like you and their financial help allows this broadcast to continue. You can join us by sending a contribution of any amount to the address listed below. And more information about this program can be found at MainStreetLiving.com, including links to other Lutheran Church Missouri Synod websites, congregations, locations, and additional ways to donate. Thank you again for joining us today and have a blessed week. I hope to see you again at the same time on next Sunday on this station.